Well, it had been a while, so I figured it was as good a time as any to bring back the Q&A videos for OTRS Central. Now, I will tell you, I don't know that it's going to be a weekly thing. I don't know if it's going to be an every other week thing, maybe even only a once or twice a month thing at most. I'm not sure yet. So just stay tuned. I will let you know via Twitter at OTRS Central is the show's Twitter handle still is um, when the next Q&A video is going to come up. Just kind of when I need to fill the channel with some content and I have some interest in answering some questions, that's when I'm going to do them, just for those of you that are wondering. So let's go ahead and get started. And thanks to a lot of you that sent off your questions. There were quite a number of them, so I'll try and get through them as many as I can in the next 15 to 20 minutes or so. Let's start off with the Poet Nav. What is the one thing about the product that keeps you watching wrestling? I think it's twofold. One, it's habit. Although I'm not watching a lot of wrestling anymore. I am watching the pay-per-views for the time being. And some of the clips on YouTube of Raw and SmackDown, that's about it. I anticipate watching SmackDown on a weekly basis, maybe in the future. But honestly, in the month of October, I'll be much more focused on the Cubs and a potential trip to the World Series, if there is a God. Uh, so, you know, it's as much as anything else, it's habit. But like I said, that I'm breaking the habit, honestly. And the second thing is always the hope that it could get better. But, you know, that hope is fading ever more by the day. Musgrave322, who do you think needs to leave the WWE the most? It's either Heel Ziggler or WWE Cesaro. So Dolph Ziggler or Cesaro. Well, first, let's say this. Fucked off Ziggler. Second, uh, I know I'm going to go in a different direction with this question, and I'm going to say Kevin Dunn. I would not lose any sleep if Bugs Bunny left the company today. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Um, OTR Schley Jr., <laughs> what do you think about fans trying to justify Raw getting 1.75 on the same night as the debate? Well, you know, it's funny is their rating didn't drop as much as I thought it maybe would. That's because they've, WWE in recent years has driven away so much of their audience. There wasn't much more audience to drive away. Now, a lot of those wrestling fans aren't going to care about that politics shit. And frankly, who can blame them? So I could see why they're trying to justify I mean, there is no justification. You know, all justification attempts made are lame. All defense mechanisms put in place by the company and by the sheepish fan base of the WWE are piss poor excuses, frankly. That's what they are. Um, so here, Declan McLaughlin, thoughts on the broken Matt Hardy character? Uh, I, I pay very little attention to it. What I have seen, it's like really bad B-movie villain. Um, I don't know if it's transmorphed into being so bad that it's actually very good. Like, I finally watched the, uh, what was it, the final deletion thing, and it reminded me of two drunk uncles at the family reunion having it out for some shit that happened 20 years ago, which ironically is what the majority of uh, the main TNA storylines have been throughout their history. There's a lot of people feuding about shit that happened 20 years ago. Uh, so, yeah. He's doing good for himself and good for him. It doesn't mean that I honestly give much of a fuck at this point in time. Um, Dexter Cumberbatch, what long-term damage will Trump's candidacy do to America? You know, I don't see where it does much damage, and I'm going to tell you why. Because as I've alluded to this in the past, is Trump in many ways is the ideal Republican candidate. He is the modern Republican, you know, in, in a lot of ways. While members of the establishment of the GOP, the more moderates, tried to distance themselves from it, they allowed themselves to get hijacked by the Tea Party, similar to how WWE allowed themselves to get hijacked by the hardcore fan base. And therefore, the overall size of the party decreases, just like the overall size of the viewership and fan base of the WWE in the U.S. decreases significantly. So the minority voice becomes the majority voice, and therein lies the problem. But in a lot of ways, he is what it is. You know, eight years ago, Obama whipped McCain. The party didn't change anything. Four years ago, Romney got whipped by Obama, and the party didn't change anything. And this time, if Trump gets whipped by Clinton, which is ridiculous because, I mean, he's still, let's face it, the only reason Donald Trump ran for president is to help Hillary get elected, which is why it blows my ever-loving frickin' mind that the alt-right and people that listen to Alex Jones and stuff who live for conspiracies are too stupid 
and blinded by said stupidity to realize that ding dong, dumb dicks, this is the ultimate conspiracy. Like, this is one conspiracy that most sane people would actually believe. And if you want to help Hillary, who's not a very good campaigner uh, and doesn't run good campaigns, get elected, what better way to do that than have Dr Donald Trump, a caricature, run for president on the GOP ticket? I mean, that's central casting. The only way Hillary's going to win is running against somebody like a Donald Trump. But I don't think it much does much damage. I don't think this country does a lot of great things to begin with anyways. We'll fund Israel and not take care of our homeless and not take care of all the vets we sent over to fight bullshit wars that come on with PTSD and a whole load of other fucking problems. You know, I mean, we allow Wall Street to skate off with all the scams they've perpetrated over the years. But we can't make sure that everybody has access to decent health care and... And just I could go on and on that. So it does no real damage. He also asked, was America ever great? If you're a white male over 21 that came from some money, this has always been a wonderful country. I mean, absolutely wonderful. It's the greatest country in the history of the universe. Unfortunately, there are a lot of other people that aren't into that category. So, you know, if you're a woman, black, Hispanic, Asian... Eh, probably been a shitty country for the most part. Let's be honest. I mean, let's just call it as we absolutely see it here. I'm trying to wait for Twitter to pull up and give me some more questions here. God damn it. All right, here we go. Uh, yeah, WWE studs and duds. Favorite tag team in wrestling today? Uh, like I said, and, and if there are other great tag teams that aren't just glorified spot monkeys and some of the other independent territories... I, I don't know them because I don't care enough about wrestling to pay attention to them. In terms of the tag teams that I see, I like Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy. You know, New Day fits in there too. Um, you won't hear me say the Bald Jobber Club, but you know, some of you might think so. I guess. Oh, uh, let's see here. I Champ V. Do you think God has main evented his last WrestleMania? <laughs> I guess it depends on your perspective, Uga. God be praised, Doug. Because technically, according to the books of Triple H, and this is located in the Book of Hunter, the Book of Hurst, and the Book of Hemsley, any WrestleMania match that Triple H is competing in is the main event of WrestleMania. So, no. <laughs> He's not done main event of WrestleMania just yet, brother. Um, let's see here. Uh... Does WWE's corporate status stop them from taking chances? Yes, because many things happen when you get into that type of corporate environment. Uh, you tend to water things down to fit a certain vision. You want everyone and everything to kind of be the same. Uh, corporations build in many layers of multifaceted protection to defend against outside-of-the-box thinking and innovation, and a lot of times they do that under the very premise of encouraging outside-of-the-box thinking and innovation. And, I mean, there are many things. In, in large part, it, the big problem does come down to that they are a big corporation, a publicly traded entity at that, and they are trying to please their shareholders. Vince McMahon, for years now, ever since you could argue 1999, even though we didn't feel the effect immediately, has been running a stock, not a sports entertainment or wrestling company. And therein lies a lot of the problem, because at the end of the day, when so much of your own personal wealth is tied up into the stock and so much of the success of the company hinges upon the delivery of said company stock, you are going to always run business with that in mind. It's natural. It's going to be a selfish reaction. You know, that's why you talk about uh, some of these big corporations where the CEO isn't taking a salary. He's getting uh, deferred stock as compensation. I mean, once that stock invests, he's making a shit ton of money, more than he ever would of taking a salary, number one. And number two, again, it can create some fundamental problems because that CEO is managing a stock, not running a company. And again, there's a big difference, and it is a problem. Uh, Josh Morlino, will WrestleMania ever go to Hawaii? I don't know if WrestleMania would. It'd be cool to see, like, SummerSlam be in Hawaii one year. You would think, in theory, that would make a lot of sense. I mean, they did a shitty WrestleMania at Caesars Palace. Why not do a freaking SummerSlam outside on the beach? I know it would feel like a WCW Hog Wild show, but WWE would actually bother to charge people to get into it. But shit, why the fuck not? 
why not try it once? Or just be in Hawaii in general and even f film one or two of your matches taking place on the beach or on the volcanoes or some shit. That'd be fucking epic as far as I'm concerned. That's actually a really good idea. Bruce Grove Jr., would you like to see them bring back a Heenan-type family manager, say, Arn Anderson or Ted DiBiase? Mm, I'd always love to see a Heenan type of manager. I'd like to see many managers, especially for so many of these guys that don't have personality, that don't have the ability to get the message across and get themselves and others over on the microphone. It'd be great to have a dedicated mouthpiece that could actually help them get over. I'd love it. <clears throat> Not going to happen, but I would absolutely love it. As far as who, um, Arn Anderson was always a good promo. And I think he would make natural sense. Uh, DiBiase, not as much. Jgor492, thoughts on the whole TNA situation regarding the potential sale of the company? At this point in time, honestly, it's not even worth, you know, conjecturing about or discussing or whatever happens, happens. And that's exactly the way I feel about it. You know, and honestly, it's one of these things. I hate when people sit there and say, well, you shouldn't root for them to go out of business. No, I don't root for them to go out of business. But if they do go out of business, it's their own fucking fault. And everybody deserves the blame. And I'm not going to feel sorry about it. I hope they don't. But if they do, them's the fucking breaks. Survival of the fitness. They just weren't good enough. Too many stupid decisions over too many years. I mean, just think about it. From a television standpoint, in the course of probably three years now, they went from averaging over a million viewers to, what, getting three hundred fifty to 400,000? I mean, this is a company that lost over half of its television audience in a couple of years' time. That tells you all you need to know. If they go out of business, it would suck, but they deserve it, and I will feel no sympathy. Uh, let's see here. Hug life for life. Thoughts on Bailey. You must be a Bailey fan, hence that Twitter handle. I, I think I think Bailey's fine. You know, she got like a little cuteness to her, I guess you would say. Um. You know, seems to be massively over, but again, it could just be NXT over. Does that translate to the main roster? Only time will tell. Um, but I don't have any issues with her. I think she's much more talented naturally than Charlotte, has much more of an it factor than Charlotte does. Uh, Toby Otunya, uh, also known as Maestro96, do you think the word smart is overused? I think a lot of times it is improperly used. Because it is used as an insult towards people like me and others and so-called fans. When really, the smarks are the ones that are actually wrestling and in, in the business. They're the fucking smarks now. And it's not even close. I mean, good God. I don't, I've, I've talked about this before. I think, it, I think it's not so much as overused. I think it's improperly used and directed in the wrong direction, if you will. Uh, Ahmed LW, how often do you watch the old shows on the network? Not hardly ever. Frankly, the only reason I have been subscribed to the network since, what, February of 2014 is because of doing this show. If I did not do this show, I would not waste the $9.99 a fucking month on it. And it's that simple. It's not a thing of habit a lot of times. A lot of times, the only reason I even keep up with fucking wrestling is because I do this show. And that's, it's that simple. Uh, little DJ boy thoughts on Shinsuke Nakamura. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I have not peeped him a whole lot. So I'm going to reserve judgment at this time. Um, I know the hardcores will love him because he flips and he kicks and he does other stuff. And he came from Japan. So that's like a half-star bonus on every fucking match. But no, honestly, I don't know much about him. Um... It would be nice to see somebody from an Asian country get massively over in the company. It's like the ultimate fuck you to Vince for all the years they shitted on all the Asian talents. You know, when you talk about shitting on the black talents, which they have, they've shitted just as bad on the Asian talents. There's no question about that. Uh, Chris Toronto, if Biggie was to win the Royal Rumble, would you have him feud? Who would you have him feud with for the title heading into WrestleMania? Uh, like I talked about before, when we're talking about thinking Biggie should win the Rumble, I said. The champion had to be one of three people. It had to be Lesnar, Triple H, Cena. Lesnar, it's not right. Triple H, it's also not right. I think it has to be Cena. If Vince was younger and healthier, it'd have to be Vince McMahon because that you would really believe. You'd believe Vince would do everything in his fucking power imaginable 
to prevent a black man from carrying his number one title. Especially if he had, like, Michael P.S. Hayes as one of his stooges. Then you'd really believe it. I mean, you want to talk about realism in wrestling, it doesn't get any realer than fucking that. Chairman 015, at what point does the WWE panic and move Cena to Raw and make him champion to boost ratings? Um, I think you'd be more likely to see the second happen, but make him the champion on SmackDown. I'll laugh if that's what they're planning on doing at No Mercy. All this talk about him losing matches clean, and then it was all just to fucking set up him winning title number 16. Uh, but if it gets much worse, there's going to be that panic there and that temptation. Uh, Dylan J. 4532, who would you say is the best in-ring performer in WWE history? Um, I really don't even want to answer that question. Because if I say Hogan, it's going to be the muscle mark shit. It's going to be the Hogan mark shit. It's going to be the, there's no way he's the best in-ring performer. But it's all a measure of, it's all a measure based off of perspective. And to me, the best in-ring performer in some ways, you could argue, is the person that drew the most money and made the most money for himself and the company. That would be Hogan. Uh, from a pure wrestling standpoint. Pure wrestling standpoint. Um... I love the Macho Man. I think that's one. I like Eddie Guerrero. I think that is another one. Um, some will point to the Bret Hart's and the Shawn Michaels. I'll take Shawn Michaels over Bret Hart any day of the week because Bret Hart, the next time he showed a facial in the match, or the first time he showed a facial in the match, his matches all tended to feel the same. Whereas Shawn Michaels could work a variety of different matches. If somebody says from a pure in-ring performance standpoint, Shawn Michaels is the best. I will not dispute that. It's when we start talking about the greatest superstar of all time is Shawn Michaels. I want to tell everybody to fuck the hell right off. Uh, Char Char TV, how do you feel about JD from NY uh, calling you out? I thought it was pretty shitty in my opinion. Don't. I stand by what I said. Raw having a cruiserweight division is fucking stupid, and the simple reason being is once... You get past the 15 or 20 minute opening promo, you're going to get a lot of pointless fucking filler matches, and that's exactly what that cruiserweight division is going to end up being on Raw. It's a show with too much pointless filler wrestling, and now you add another division with another title. Yeah, it's just, and you look at when they brought them in, the first thing they did after the cruiserweight classic is they didn't even bother featuring the cruiserweight champion. They just had some four-way match to determine a number one contender two and a half hours into the goddamn show. It's still stupid that Raw has a cruiserweight division for reasons that I alluded to in the video and reasons that I didn't. As far as him, I will tell you, I didn't watch what he said. The only reason I even bothered to go back and look at the video was because somebody at work came up to me a few days later was telling me that they had seen my video. Yes, this does happen. And told me some of the shit that was being said. I'm like, oh, okay. Because I'm at this point in time, I really don't give a fuck. I'm thankful that he did talk about it. Because let's put it this way at the end of the day. This is a person, I believe, that has five times the subscribers that I do. And I, the one thing I thought was funny out of all of this, the one thing I thought, I will say that was stupid. Because, again, I didn't watch the video. He was telling me about how to make YouTube videos or some shit or being good at it. You know, I will say this. While I don't have the number of subscribers that that individual does, and I don't hate on him, and I wish him the best, he's the one that knew about me. I had no fucking clue who this guy was. Honestly. Swear to God. I never watched one of his videos. I still have never watched any of his videos. I managed to get somebody with a channel with five times the amount of viewership of me to talk about me and get himself and other people to watch my videos. Who won that? Just think about that for a second. So no, I don't hate him. I'm not going to do some stupid rant video or talk shit or respond in any type of way. Why? He had his opinion. I had mine. I'll be right. And then we'll pretend like it didn't happen. That's how the shit's been going for almost six fucking years now. So what's the difference? But again... I appreciate the fact that somebody with a much bigger audience paid attention to me when I didn't even know who the hell they were. Just saying. Alex GT 1412 at Mania 33. If WWE had the chance to do it, if it was the right time, would you rather Cena Taker or Sting Taker? 
from a story and history standpoint, Sting Taker all day from a actually could be a really good match in terms of the actual performance stuff, it would be Cena Taker. Now, if the streak was still on the line, I'd rather see Sting Cena Taker, although there'd be that fear of me that Taker would want to make Cena that guy and hand it off to him and stamp him as the next locker room leader. So there'd be more fear. If you ever wanted me to act like a dim-witted mark and do the shit like I used to do when the streak was still alive and I gave a fuck, you know, have the streak still be alive and have John Cena go after it, then people are really going to wonder what the fuck happened. Uh, Zylander Kazar had asked me these questions are a couple days old. Will you watch Bound for Glory? The answer is no, because I don't care. Uh, second coming of Ali. Do you think the famous moolah is misrepresented by the WWE? They hide China but glorify a predator and a pimp. Good point. Moolah was not a nice person. Moolah did some shitty things to many women within the industry. You know, the, that spider shit she did to, uh, what was it, Wendy Richter 30 plus years ago. It's all about uh, politics. It's all about who's aligned with who. You know, Moolah was always a good soldier for Vince and Vince Sr., so... You know, she's going to get treated one way, and it's not like Moolah was having relations with uh, Paul Levesque when Stephanie came in and uh, fucked shit up. That was China. And as far as we know, Moolah didn't do a porn. China did. You know, so that's probably the difference. Uh, Ligerbomb50, current favorite basketball player, probably Jimmy Butler because he's a bull. Um, Zedgar92, why are Americans so blind and stupid when it comes to politics? Because Americans are stupid, and after so many years of getting certain narratives pounded down our heads by state-run corporate-owned media, you know, it's not a surprise. I mean, you legitimately have people that actually believe that Fox News is fair and balanced. I mean, if that isn't stupid, I don't know what the fuck is. You know, this is people that like what the NFL does in terms of their show of patriotism, you know, where we can't see the players be introduced for the lineups, but we sure make sure that we have to show the fucking national anthem every week. You know, never mind the fact that the WW or the NFL, excuse me, is getting paid by the government with taxpayer dollars, mind you, by the military to put on these phony shows of patriotism. You know, it just... I won't even go anymore and do it. I, I there's so many reasons why we're stupid. It's just we just are, you know. We just formulate these opinions and they're fucking idiotic. Uh, Evan Voorhees is Bray Wyatt the most wasted superstar with the most potential ever. No, there's been others that are much worse, but Bray Wyatt is a guy with a lot of potential that is being wasted. Looney Foxy between Cody Rhodes, Ryback, Wade Barrett, and Sandow. Who could have been the biggest star if WWE gave a fuck about them? Probably Wade Barrett because you had the international angle there. And out of those four, he you could argue along with Sandow, but I think Barrett had more versatility in terms of his promos. He was the, you know what I mean? He was the best mic worker. He was the best natural heel out of the four, in my opinion. On top of that, you look at him, he was about six foot five, 265 pounds. So he, he had the most WW than Ryback. It was Barrett. Barrett's the biggest miss out of those four. He really truly is. Sir Mike X, early pick to win the Rumble. Mine is Dean Ambrose. Cena will face Taker, and Finn could still be hurt by then. My pick is Big E, but I honestly don't know what the fuck this company's going to do at this point. Uh, let's see here. A Vargas 067, what were your thoughts on the first presidential debate? <laughs> For those that like Obama or hate Obama, you had eight years, and these are the two fucks this country has chosen to represent them. Fuck all of you. <laughs> Uh, WAPW, who do you think is the most overrated player and coach in NFL history? Ooh. Most overrated player? <laughs> Peyton Manning. <laughs> Peyton Manning. <laughs> Peyton Manning. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know about coach, but I, I'll, I'll go with the player. I'll say Peyton Manning. 
Uh, B Viper 24. If you hate wrestling, why do you keep watching knowing this is how Triple H, AK God, and Stephanie picture wrestling going forward? It's a fair question to ask. It is a fair question to ask. Uh, Song Goshuaku, your thoughts on the fact since Royal Rumble 2015, every World Universal title match is included as Shield member? Well, you know, you spent two, three years pounding this faction and building them up. That's the way it should be. Imagine how stupid it would look if since 2015, none of them have been involved in a title match and you had done all of that with the Shield. You know, that's how stupid things would be. That's why the Nexus was so fucking stupid. All of this to be one big fucking waste of time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Silent Kev 82 is the reality era just a piss poor rebranding of the PG era? And who do who do they think they were fooling? Uh, apparently, a lot of people that actually sit there and come on my videos and stuff and talk about how this is the reality era. This is the reality era. The only reason it's the reality era is because this reality of the era is that it's fucking shit. They're lazy, they don't care, and they don't know how to do better. I mean, plain and simple. Reality, my ass. Where is the reality in this? Look at the in-ring product in and of itself. You have dudes not selling. They do this whole series of fucking moves. I mean, he's flying off of the frickin' top turnbuckle into the goddamn mat on the outside to run in and do another somersault, half gator into flaming shards of ass cracks. I mean, come on now. I just don't know. Uh, Brian Smith NB. Would Miz winning the Rumble and going on to beat Cena for the title at Mania be a good storyline? You know, M M Miz isn't the worst option to have to win the Rumble at this point in time. I don't know if you want to go back down the Cena path, uh, but they could do worse. Um, let's see here. Uh, Tim Dragon Kid is our genie, a contender for top 10 bust of all time, even worse for the Deadskins than Heath Schuler. Absolutely. Because he was a higher draft pick because they took RG3 second overall in 2012, and they gave up all those picks to go get him. So he has to be the bigger bust. He has to be. He was, he was so bad for them, and they did him so dirty. I mean, it's a combination of things that he ended up getting released, and they got nothing back for him. Um, let's see here. Any other questions? Uh, Luke Granger 23 with Cena being in the title picture and Royal Rumble being in Texas could now mean Taker is in with a legit shot. <laughs> you could do a lot worse fucking things. Give it a shot. You want to give the product a little shot in the arm? That's one way to give it a shot in the arm. <laughs> in response to my video of who should win the 2017 Royal Rumble, SPL 286. Listen to it while eating breakfast. What the fuck? No mention whatsoever about my boy, Randy Orton. Chase Oliver. Stop with all these dummy accounts asking Randy Orton questions. Oh, uh, what do you think he does to take care of his raging rainbow? What is his preferred brand of baby oil? How does one go about growing a set of sleeve tattoos and construction worker beard like Randall Keithworth? What exactly is the science to finding the gopher hole in the middle of the ring before another perfectly executed RKO? That's chance. <laughs> Matt Meffe, should WWE air Raw and SmackDown on the network since it seems ratings aren't a priority? No, because if they do that, they're losing all that money uh, that helps fund the company from USA in the television deal. I get what you're saying, though. If you don't give a fuck, then why be on TV? But if they lost their TV, they'd be fucked as a company. Uh, and then he also asks, who do you think Brock will face at WrestleMania? No fucking idea. Haven't even thought about it. Don't even fucking care. Young Jail, where do you think this Miz storyline is going? Either away um, to a match with Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 33 or to a Royal Rumble win. Otherwise, I don't fucking know what's the point. Uh, the Russell Gamer, dude, how did the Saints beat the Chargers by one point? Because the Chargers aren't a very good team and they choked. That's plain and simple. Uh, K. Nogjack. No Kaj, excuse me. Schleg Daddy was the DDP versus Macho Man feud in 97 one of the best. It was good. I wouldn't call it one of the best. And is what KD did as bad as what LeBron did six years ago? Um, yeah. They're both punk moves. 
I understand more so why LeBron did looking back because look at the infrastructure that was around him in Cleveland. KD's was a bigger bitch move. I actually give KD more shit about that. Because you wanted to play in a championship contending team, then stop playing like a punk bitch in the Western Conference Finals when your team is down 3-1, and don't just blame Russell Westbrook. Just don't. No, he's a fucking punk bitch. Oh, I can't beat him. I'm going to fucking join him. At least when LeBron went to Dwayne Wade's team, you know, he was going to be the alpha dog, even though it was Dwayne Wade's team. KD's going under a team where it's Steph Curry. It's Clay Thompson. It's Draymond Green. He's the fourth dude. I mean, that's some punk bitch shit. Just come on, man. Just lame as fuck. And then Tasty Waffles closes us out by asking, where's Summer? Summer is fine. Summer is great. Summer will be back on camera probably pretty soon. Thanks again for all your questions. I'll see you later.